In today's Sunday dinner video, y'all are in for a huge treat. So I'm gonna be showing how to make my easy homemade bread. This is beginner friendly. I myself am not a baker, but y'all, this is almost foolproof. It comes out delicious every single time and it never lasts more than a couple days in my household. So I'm gonna share with you how to make this bread step by step, and you'll wanna stay tuned because my family happens to love cinnamon butter with this bread especially. So I'm gonna show you how to make a super simple and delicious homemade cinnamon butter. Grab you a snack for this one, you're gonna be hungry. Let me show you how to make this easy homemade bread. So the most important part for this is you really want to add your water anywhere from between 105 to 115 degrees. I'm just using my meat thermometer over here in my kitchen sink. Once it hits that mark, I'll just add my two cups of water and I'll be good. It will drop a few degrees when I put it in this cold bowl. All right, next to our water, we're gonna add one packet of the active dry yeast. This is about one tablespoon gonna sprinkle it down in there. And then also we're gonna add just a little squirt of honey. The recipe calls for a one fourth cup total. We're gonna add more here in just a minute. But for now, just to get our yeast kind of bubbly and active, just a little squirt. All right, and now all we're gonna do, we're gonna let this sit for about five or 10 minutes you should start to see the top kind of foaming up a little bit. You should see some action in there. That means your yeast is good and it's gonna help your bread to rise. So for the type of flour I like to use, we really prefer a good bread flour. You can use all purpose for this recipe too if that's all you have, if that's all you have in your pantry and you wanna give it a try. But the difference between bread flour and all purpose in here, the bread flour gives you almost more of a more light and airy texture with your bread. And the bread flour is a little bit more, I don't wanna say dense because it's not dense at all. It's just a little bit more dense than all purpose flour. And we like it because it's a little bit more substantial when you're gonna make a sandwich or French toast or anything like that. I think the bread flour is the way to go. All right, it's been about 10 minutes. You can see the yeast has started to bubble up. They have a good bit of foam on top of the water there. So now we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of our honey. Like I said, it's about a fourth of a cup total. I know I shouldn't, but I just eyeball this part. We're also gonna add in about two tablespoons of cubed butter. And as you can see, this is pretty small little cubes we're adding in there. We're also gonna add two teaspoons of salt. And I just have all of my flour measured out over here. This is about five and a half cups total of flour that we'll probably use. But for now, we're just gonna get about three cups added in. I'm gonna turn my mixer on and I'm just gonna mix everything until it's combined. Next, I'm just gonna keep continuing to add my flour about a half a cup at a time until my dough is at the texture I want. I'll tell y'all about that in just a second. But we're gonna keep adding our flour while the mixer is running and the dough will be beginning to pull off the sides of the bowl. It will also be very smooth, elastic, but when you touch it with your finger, it'll be a little bit tacky, but it won't be sticky. It shouldn't stick to your finger where it comes off. And if it does that, just add another half a cup of flour or so until you reach that texture. All right, next we're gonna knead our dough. And if you're using a stand mixer, you can just do this on about medium speed for about four to five minutes. If you're doing it by hand, you can do that as well for five to eight minutes. I tend to do mine four or five minutes with my mixer, with my dough hook, and then I'll get it out and knead it just a couple times by hand. So I'm gonna put it on medium speed. Be back in about four to six minutes. We're gonna need a large bowl. And to it, I'm just gonna add a little drizzle of olive oil. You can use any kind of oil that you want. 
and we're just gonna rub it around the bottom of our bowl as well as the sides. And this is where our bread is gonna do its first rise. I do have a little bit of extra oil in here because we're gonna coat our dough ball as well. All right, let's get it taken off our dough hook. And I really like the texture of this, so I'm not gonna need it anymore. I'm gonna see if y'all can tell on camera. You just want a dough ball, it's elastic, it's pretty smooth, and you can see it's not really sticking to my hands. So I'm gonna get it in our bowl, flip it over a couple times. That way it is coated just a little bit in that olive oil. And now for our first rise, you wanna place your dough in a warm place. The warmest place in my house that I found, I just popped mine in the oven with only the oven light turned on and I kind of scoot it back in the corner where the light is and that seems to work perfectly. We are gonna get this covered with some wrap. You can use plastic wrap or a kitchen towel. So I'm gonna get this covered and we want this to double in size. So you can take a picture of it with your phone if you can't remember, or you could put a little line on the outside if you needed to, or a big rubber band. But we're gonna pop it in the oven with the light on till it doubles in size. It's gonna take about an hour and 45 minutes to two hours. All right, y'all, we're pulling out that dough out of the oven with just the light on. You can see it has definitely risen a little more than double in size. Now what we're gonna do is just punch it down. You'll see it starts to deflate. We're just getting rid of those air bubbles, but we're about to do our second rise. Next, I'm gonna bring over, I'm using two bread pans. They're a little bit different in size, but as long as they're similar, it'll be fine. So I'm gonna spray each one down pretty generously with just some olive oil cooking spray. Okay, and then also you don't have to do this, but uh, one recipe I saw said to put parchment paper in the bottom, and this just kind of ensures your bread is gonna come out. We definitely don't want it sticking, and I like to give this another little spray on top. All right, I'm gonna bring our dough out. Now I'm just gonna break it in half. Then I'm gonna flatten it out just a little bit Kind of like I'm gonna make a pizza. And then I'm just gonna roll it up. And I'm not rolling it really tight or anything, just until I have a little loaf shape or a little log shape. I'll just bring over my bread pan and pop it in there. That's gonna give that really smooth top. And if you've ever cut into bread and saw the little swirl in there, that's how you do that. Let's do the same thing to this one. Now these are gonna go for their second rise. It's only about 45 minutes this time. We are gonna cover them lightly, but I'm gonna spray the inside of my plastic wrap just because they are gonna puff up over our bread pans. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cinch it down to the sides this time either. Just kinda loosely covering it. I know that doesn't look pretty, but that is perfectly fine. Because basically when this bread rises up, we want it to be able to push that plastic wrap up as well. We don't want the plastic wrap to hold it down. All right, so these are just going back into the oven with just the light on for about 45 minutes or until the bread starts to rise just a little bit over our bread pans. All right, y'all, our bread is done with its second rise. You can see how it's risen up over the top about an inch or so. We're just gonna remove that plastic wrap. And there we go. Now all we're gonna do is preheat the oven to 350, and these are just gonna take anywhere between 30 to 35 minutes. Mine normally take about 30. I'll check back in with y'all here in just a little bit. Our bread is done. Look how beautiful this bread already is. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and get them out onto some cooling racks. You can see they just pop out super easily. Smell delicious, by the way. And the last step I like to do, I'm just gonna open a brand new stick of butter and just brush along the tops of each loaf of bread. 
And now as you can see, the tops are hard at this point, but that's what you want. That's what you wanna hear when you pull them out of the oven. But after these sit a couple hours, the tops will be perfectly soft. And that's when you want to slice these up. You can go ahead and slice them here in about 10 or 15 minutes, but you'll just have that crusty top. And I'll tell you, it will be very, it'll be a lot harder to slice, especially into even slices as compared to if you let them cool down for a couple hours. There we go. How beautiful are these things? And these are the most easy and delicious loaves of bread you will ever make. All right, so to store your bread, you really wanna store it in something airtight, but plastic wrap works just fine because like I said, this bread only lasts a couple days, a few days in our house. So we just keep it covered and I'll usually slice up one loaf at a time, or you can just pop it in a gallon size freezer bag, or they even sell like the little bread bags on Amazon if you wanna do that. Or of course, also the little hard plastic containers you can order on Amazon as well. So our bread has been sitting for probably about an hour or two. I did cover it after the first hour. I'm gonna show you how beautifully this bread slices up. So I like to do about 12 slices. So the way I like to do that is just cut it down the middle. Give a little look at the inside. Look how beautiful that is, y'all. It is perfectly tender and soft, but it does hold up to, like I said, a sandwich or anything you wanna make with it, garlic toast. We're gonna have some spaghetti tonight. I'll probably make some garlic toast with this. And now since I said I wanted 12 slices, I'll cut it in half again, and then I'll know each other half would need three slices. You don't have to do it like that, of course, and you can slice it as you go. I just like to kind of have even slices. There you go, y'all. Look at that bread. Tell me that does not look delicious. I love making these at the beginning of the week. Perfect for sandwiches, cinnamon toast, French toast. If you don't use them all up, you can cut these up, make them into croutons. So many options. All right, now really quick, I wanna show y'all how to make the most delicious cinnamon honey butter. If you've ever been to Texas Roadhouse and had their delicious yeast rolls with that butter they give you, this tastes identical. And y'all, with this bread, it's a match made in heaven. Let me show you how to make it. It's the easiest thing in the world to make too. All right, so we're gonna start with three sticks of butter and this is just room temperature softened butter. To that, we're gonna add half a cup of powdered sugar. We're gonna need two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. And lastly, we're gonna need about three tablespoons of honey. I'm just gonna eyeball that. That should be good. Then all you're gonna do is mix everything together. You can get out your hand mixer, but this butter is pretty soft. I'm just gonna mash it around, mix it around, and this is gonna be so perfect. My kids love to eat cinnamon toast for breakfast in the morning, so this just makes it a little bit easier to have it already ready to go. And by the way, I just wanted to show y'all this for comparison. This is the Land Lakes. You can just buy it already made at the store, but this, as you can see, is gonna make a ton more and it's obviously a ton cheaper as well because you probably already have cinnamon and everything like that to make it together. All you need is a little bit of butter, powdered sugar, cinnamon, and honey. That is it. All right, this looks perfect, looks delicious. And of course, this is good on the bread that we're making today, but this is also good on just some regular yeast rolls. That is a favorite of ours. All right, let's give it a little taste test. I mean, that is spot on. It is so good. Y'all gotta give this a try. It's so good, y'all. Look at that, look at that huge bite I took. <laughs> It's delicious. Oh my goodness. 
Mm-hmm. I gotta stop. If you've made it this far in the video, drop a comment, let me know what you're up to. Say, hey, I love to chat with y'all in the comments. And let me know if you've ever made homemade bread or maybe you're thinking about giving this recipe a try. I'm telling you, if I can make it and make it this good, so can you. Looking forward to talking with y'all. I'll leave another video right here if you need seconds. See you over there and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye y'all.